God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That's from uh, Psalm 100. 
It's wonderful to see you all here this morning. It's the fifth Sunday of the month, so we thought we'd do something different. Our first cafe church. I uh, don't know when we'll do it again, but here we are. And uh, I know for some of you, you may feel very uncomfortable. You're out of your comfort zone. You're not sitting where you used to do. Um, it'd be good if you could mingle as well as we, well, what am I saying? As we change songs, you could go and maybe sit with someone else and uh, get to know each other at a, a deeper level. Because that's what this sort of environment allows. It allows for us to chat and be sociable and just be a little bit more relaxed. Um, we will be following this service with spoken communion and then we'll be celebrating someone's very special birthday, uh, Sheila's 90th, in the hall afterwards. So there'll still be opportunity for folks who would like to go and have tea and coffee after this service to go in the hall. Um, so we're trying to cater for all, all preferences. Um, Anyway, so today is our do-it-yourself service. So in a sense, I get a Sunday off, as, as do the rest of the leadership team, um, because this is your service. So we asked you to uh, send us your songs, hymns, Bible verses that you wanted included, included in the service. So that's what we're doing. The last time we did it, it was a real blessing because everyone's sharing their reasons for their songs. And so you're getting to know... Um, what motivates people in their faith and it's 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 it, well it's just wonderful anyway we're going to uh, pray and then I'm going to invite Lynn to introduce her song so Heavenly Father we thank you for today we thank you for the glorious sunshine we thank you one another for one another and most of all we th we thank you for Jesus and we pray Lord that throughout this morning you would be honored and glorified we thank you for our musicians and our singers the talents and gifts you've given them we pray for every aspect of our time together today and we pray that we would know your anointing with us today in jesus name amen so lynn if you could come and share so the first song that we're singing today is called um here i am to worship and it is um, like a prayer saying that, God, I'm here, I'm available to worship you. And in the chorus it says, um, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And it just, yeah, gets me every time just to imagine the pain that Jesus went through on that cross and to know that um, my sins are forgiven and that, I can go to heaven. So, <laughs> woohoo! Um, so, yeah, that is one of my songs that I really love. Thank you.
wonderful to remember, remind ourselves how wonderful God is that Jesus, he sent Jesus to die on the cross. I'm going to go to Val now. Where's Val? There. I'm coming to you. I think that, well, well, you can come up if you want. I just thought some people might like it if I came to them. But <laughs> Come on then. Uh, okay. Off you go. I've got a prayer for you first that amazed me the first... Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Is that better? Yeah. I've got a prayer for you first that I found years ago, soon after I became a Christian, and it's always meant a lot to me. And then I'll tell you about my song. So, I asked for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health, that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity, that I might do better things. I asked for riches, that I might be happy. I was given poverty, that I might be wise. I asked for power, that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness, that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things, that I might enjoy life. I was given life, that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I had asked for, but everything that I had hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among all men most richly blessed. Apparently that prayer was found on the body of a dead Confederate soldier. So it's an old one, but not as old as some. But I've always liked that one. My song, we haven't sung here for about 30 odd years. Uh, it's called I Am a Wounded Soldier. There's two things about this song that I really like. The chorus repeats the lines, I am loved, I am accepted. And I spent an awful, awful lot of my life not feeling loved and not feeling acceptable. And when I heard this, it sort of it went from the head to the heart sort of thing, and I got it into my skull that God really does accept me just the way I am, I am warts and all. And the other part of this is that I am a wounded soldier. We all carry with us so many hurts and wounds, whether they're physical or mental or anything like that, and yet we still have to carry on with life, and that's... And the fact that one of the lines is, God is healing me, uh, it may not promise healing now. It might be when I'm dead. I don't really mind. But the fact that he is here with me, healing me slowly as I go through my life, that's always meant an awful lot to me. And that's it.
That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to do a big yee-haw at the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I also think when we sing the chorus, we should all be clapping like that, but maybe that's just a step too far this morning. Um, Josh, would you like to come up or shall I bring the mic to you? You'll come up. Okay. I'm beginning to regret offering to do this. <laughs> I really find the other two wonderful acts very hard to follow. But I just have to tell you, this particular hymn is important to me, or song, worship song. God's Holy Spirit touched me deeply while we were singing this many years ago now. It was part of a, a really life-changing time for me. I was beginning to understand that we cannot earn God's love. He gives it to us freely. It was a real eye-opener to me. We just have to be willing to receive it. And so the words freely, freely still touch my heart today and I hope they do yours today too. so much Joe. I think that's one of those songs isn't it that when you're singing it you take it on board and I remember singing it and Lord I'll go wherever you send me and it meant from my heart so that song played a part in me being here today. Yeah. <laughs> Over to Chris he's going to bring a Bible scripture to us. The, uh, the verse I've chosen is from John's Gospel, chapter 10, and the verse is number 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is a verse I particularly like, 
have life to the full. Um, I remember going to Lorraine Colum's ordination a few years ago in Christ Church in Oxford, and the bishop there spoke about singing with confidence, sing the hymns with confidence. And that just lifted my voice as well. I started singing slightly more loudly and with confidence. And we've got, Heather and I have got the same opportunity coming up shortly. Um, Catherine Radcliffe, who was here for a few months last year, I can't remember the exact timing, but uh, she was here for several months. She's being ordained on the 2nd of July in Christ Church in Oxford. So Heather and I are going to that. And I think going to Lorraine's and going to our friend's one is just having life to the full. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, I say yes, that abundant life that Jesus gives us. We need to remember that when we're going through tough times that Jesus came to give us abundant life, even when we're going through tough times as well. But thank you for that. And give Christine our very warm wishes. Catherine. Catherine. <laughs> I know Christine Radcliffe as well. Uh, right, Anne, are you going to introduce your song? Yes. yes. You're staying there, yes. Um, yeah. Um, this has been one of my favorites. It's just as I am, by the way since I was confirmed, and that's over 70 years ago. And I think you'll find that as you sing it, every verse has something in there which speaks to you. But the one verse that really, really speaks to me is, um, just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. And we put barriers up in our own lives, but God breaks them all down. And um, then it, you know, it goes on to say, now, now to be thine, yea, thine alone, just as I am. And uh, it just really speaks to me whenever I want, you know, if I, if I feel I need to look at something, I just look at this. It takes me back to my confirmation, which you say is a very long time ago, but it's always been with me. So I hope you all enjoy singing it. Oh, 
that's a song that helps us get everything in perspective, doesn't it? You know, it's a big song with big words and it helps us know um, that we are finite, but God is infinite. Um, okay, so Rosemary, where's Rosemary? Are you happy to come forward? Yeah? <laughs> so Rosemary's going to introduce her song and then a Bible reading all the other way around. I'm not quite sure how you're going to do it. You had, well, you gave a scripture verse that you liked, that you wanted to mention, maybe? Mm. No? Maybe not. Oh. <laughs> I'll, 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 tell, I'll, I'll tell send you the, the email. Okay, I'll t- <laughs> right. I'm going to say the Bible reading that I thought I was going to do was one I especially like is The Road to Emmaus. Um, the people just seem so real and just like us because they're searching and they get some things right but not everything and it just ends well and I love the way they go back at the end and tell the other disciples about their wonderful experience. Right, the other way around now, the hymn I have chosen is Here is Love Vast as the Ocean and I'd never come across this hymn until Jill Hajigo introduced me to it, which is very special for anyone who knows Jill. And it just combines the huge power of love of God with loving kindness. from uh, Luke, because not everyone will be familiar with it that uh, Rosemary was talking about, because we are in this season between, um, well, celebrating Jesus' death on the cross, his resurrection, we had his ascension on Thursday, and we're in this season of waiting for his coming spirit, which will be next Sunday. Um, But every day we pray that the Lord would fill us with his spirit. But this passage that Rosemary was talking about is on the road to Emmaus, um, when the two disciples could have been man and wife, could have been two women, two men, we just don't know. Actually, we we know that one of them is called Cleopas, which I think is a man's name. Um, Anyway, they're walking away from Jerusalem. They're very sad because Jesus has died, and everyone thought that he was going to be their deliverer, their saviour, their messiah. 
Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. I always wonder if that has ever happened to us. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. So when people ask questions, it's not because they don't know the answer always. Um, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of the women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they'd seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in and stayed with them. It's interesting that bit, isn't it? What would have happened if he'd kept walking and they hadn't urged him? They wanted to meet this man and know more of him. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. So they were hospitable to Jesus and in that hospitality uh, they met with him. Um, so it's a really powerful passage, and uh, I don't know about you, but that warming of the heart, uh, that, that knowledge that God is with us, um, is something I certainly crave, like I've had it once or twice, I'd like it a bit more, please, Lord. Um, and this season of thy kingdom uh, come, where we say, come Holy Spirit, we want that for ourselves, and we all also want it for our five friends family, whatever that we are praying for. Um, so Lynn is now going to lead us in a time of prayer. So yeah, we're going to be praying for our five friends who we are thinking about and praying for over this time up to Pentecost. And the prayers that um, we're going to be praying today are taken from the prayer journal um, I don't know if everyone's got this but there's some really good stuff in here um, so you might have been wondering what the wool is on your tables so for praying for your five friends um, Jill did mention last week that one thing that is sometimes helpful is if you have some physical representation of those five friends so what we're going to do as we pray through each section, if you want to take your piece of wool, you don't have to, but if you want to take your piece of wool, and each time you pray through one section, if you tie a knot in the wool and hold that knot, that represents one of your friends or whoever you're praying for. So <clears throat> I'm going to do the same. So, um, oh, and also after each section, I'm going to say um, we pray 
and then if we all can say, thy kingdom come, after each section. Okay, let us pray. So we tie this first knot. So if we tie our first knot. Create in those I name before you, God, a deep thirst for your refreshment. Then send your Holy Spirit to satisfy and renew them. We pray, thy kingdom come. We tie this second knot. Without getting in a muddle. <laughs> we tie the second knot and pray. Breathe on them, breath of God. Fill them with life anew. So they would be a new creation in you, God. We pray, thy kingdom come. We tie this third knot. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit bring about a change in them. Because God, you are a fire of love. We pray. Thy kingdom come. We tie our fourth knot. Holy Spirit, begin a work in them that you will bring to completion. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God, you alone suffice. We pray. Thy kingdom come. We tie our fifth knot. Come Holy Spirit, give voice to our witness that we might be able to speak the good news of Jesus Christ to these five people. We pray, thy kingdom come. Amen. Please feel free to take your pieces of wool home. Thank you so much, Liam. Um, Helen, it's your turn to introduce your song. Um, and I think thou and maybe I will try and uh, support you in some of the actions, but anyway. So we haven't sung this in a few years, but this is an action song, but don't worry, it's not a lively one. It is a slow one. <laughs> but we haven't done this since Holiday Club because of the due to COVID. But... Um, it's called You Need Not Fear, but we have done this in Cornwell, but it was originally done on video because we hadn't um, worked it out on how to do with the band, but we have worked it out with the band a, a while back, but now we have, and it, when I heard it, it really spoke to me. And at the start of lockdown, as I'm sure many of you have heard, we sadly lost Benson. And it really affected me because I'm sure many of you know that Benson was, our horse was a huge part of Mark, the O'Sullivan family and he really helped my, myself and Nicola. And and he really helped us in just mentally and physically and he was just a big part of just a community and he even may, made an appearance on my the day before my 18th birthday and I'm sure many of you, some of you might have remembered and might have made me cry. <laughs> so 
Hi, and I will be assisting Val with the action. So if you are able to join in with the actions, feel free to join in, but if not, feel free to join in. And you're learning sign language, it's not just actions. Thank you. That was very brave and courageous, Helen, sharing that, and uh, what a beautiful song. So we come now to our sharing time. If any of you got any good news stories you would like to share, uh, while you're thinking about those, I'll just share some notices, and maybe Sonia has got something to say as well. Um, so we've got our Jubilee Jamboree on Friday, uh, two till five o'clock here. It'll all be outside. Um, but we need help setting up. So Thursday at 2 o'clock, if you could come and help us set up gazebos. We're not having a great big marquee now because it's just too much. It was going to be too big. Uh, you needed about 100 people to put it up. And if it was here for three or four days, it'd be worth it. But for three hours, it's not really. Anyway, if you have a gazebo that you're happy to lend, please come and bring it. If you don't have a gazebo and you've got time on your hands and you can help us put, put them up, I think we'd probably appreciate about five or six of them. We've got four already in the pipeline. Um, and we're going to put bunting up, loads and loads of bunting. So if anyone's around who doesn't mind climbing up ladders and uh, doing risky things like that, that would be great. Um, and then on th uh, Friday morning, it'll be a question of bringing some tables and chairs out. We are hoping most people bring chairs and 
picnic rugs and things like that. But for, for some folks, that's not going to be possible. So we want to put some things out and setting up the stalls. Um, so anyway, if you can help. But more important than any of that, please just come and please bring whoever you think might enjoy it. There's going to be lots of fun. Knobbly knees competition, best beautiful hat, um, crowns for kiddies, uh, country dancing led by Bill and the St. Catherine's Country Band, uh, quizzes galore, and cakes and tea, etc. So I'm going to hand over to Sonia to say that a little bit. Well, I haven't got the notice sheet, um, so let's do it from memory. Um, so this is a community event, the, the Jamboree, and we're getting help from um, the Tilehurst Afternoon, Tilehurst Triangle WI, so thank you to them. And they are going to be making cakes and helping serving the teas and so on. Um, but we've got, I think Jill worked out, it was 30 cakes we needed. And I think it's about 200 hundred scones or scones, whichever way you say it. Now, lots of that has been provided, but if you can bake or provide one or the other of those, there is a list outside. Come and talk to me um, or Sue or Jill or sign your name, um, and we would appreciate that. So, um, and bring them on Friday morning if you can. But any problems, just talk to me about that. And just a heads up in the notices, um, our summer fate is the 2nd of July, and it's only about three weeks after the Jamboree. So I just want you to save a date in your diary for that. Um, things will happen as usual, maybe some new things, but we do need helpers as always. We do need um, you know, donations of you know, tombola items, gifts, whatever you can sort of root out, maybe a um, post-lockdown clear out or something. <laughs> um, so thanks very much. So we have um, tried to publicise the Jamboree widely. We've leafleted a few local houses and people seem to be very open. So I'm hoping there's going to be a lot of folks here uh, on Friday. Um, the other thing to say is next Sunday is Pentecost, uh, which of course is one of the most important celebrations in the church year. It will be communion in the morning, uh, but we're having Pentecost praise and worship at seven o'clock in the evening. Um, so do come along to that if, if you can. It'll be very informal, um, but a time to really praise God for his Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, right, any sharing that anyone wants to do? Oh, Hilary, Paddy. Um, two things, just to say the Helen song, I think, has touched many, many people. Lots of tissues going around, so thank you, Helen. Um, and if I can say it, I want to say um, about the Mother's Union quiz, with a totally unknown quiz master, I couldn't possibly think who they could be, um, on June the 8th. Um, that's our evening meeting. And that's open to anybody. Tickets are £4. It includes a light ploughman's supper. So see me, Maureen, Steph, and please come along. Thank you. I'm going to be greedy. I've got three things. Uh, first, uh, on Friday, um, our grandson, Kieran, got married to Millie, and it was a wonderful day. Unfortunately, it wasn't a church wedding, but it was really good, and I thank God for that. The weather was brilliant, yeah, lovely. So that was good, good news. A little bit of sad, sad news. A um, friend of ours, uh, John Pady, anybody remain, remember John Pady? He hasn't been too well recently. He's had a couple of spells in hospital. He's uh, had a pacemaker in, and, um, but he's back out of hospital at the moment. Um, I think you'll find he's, he, he's a little bit, I uh, can't think of the word, but he wants to do his own thing. He won't let the carers 
do their bits and pieces. Looking at a little lady down there is probably a little bit similar to that. <laughs> and uh, I did ask Jill if I could do a couple of uh, lines of uh, readings that I actually keep in a little book uh, to home. There's two sen uh, verses. One is from Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope and assurance about what we do not see. The key on that one is hope and faith for me. And in Romans 15, 13, verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In a lot of songs we sing now, you'll find hope. Two, two songs we had today, well, three songs actually. We had one today, the first one had hope in it. Um, one we're going to sing in a minute, In Christ Alone, that has hope in it. And one of my favourites, Faith, has hope in it. I believe we live with hope. Believing good things will happen through faith. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paddy. Any, anyone else? Well, um, I think before we go further, we... Uh, Val? <laughs> there just appears to me to be a real theme running through today that's all about drawing near to God and putting, letting barriers down and him drawing near to you. That was all. <laughs> yeah, I found it quite powerful, really. It's been wonderful. Um, I'm, yes, I am so, I hope this is the right word. I'm so proud. I'm proud to be in this church. Yeah, it's good. Um, but we want to say happy birthday to Sheila, whose birthday, her 90th birthday, was last Monday. Um, so we are going to have cake and fizzy drinks um, in the hall uh, after communion. So please hang around if you're not staying for communion for that. And we'll all raise a glass to you, Sheila. Um, but I wondered if we could just sing uh, a happy birthday to you now while we're all together. Do you want to say anything, Sheila? Sorry? In the hall. Oh, okay. She'll say a few hall words in the hall. So, uh, yeah, don't hold your breath, though. Um, anyway. Okay. So, um, how do we do this? Um, birthdays are happy days for loving and sharing. Thank you for Gila and bless her next year. Okay, and Sheila Bryant is going to introduce our last song of the service, yeah. The hymn I've chosen is In Christ Alone. Um, it always gets me here and here, <laughs> mostly here, um, taking us through what Christ went through for us. And as Paddy mentioned, when he burst forth out of the tomb, the hope that he's given all of us and the hope that he also gives me. Thank you.
Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain among, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So uh, now's your opportunity to go to the hall or to stay seated where you are. Um, I think some folks will come and just clear the tables and then we'll have communion. But I know we have got uh, the musicians another song while all that's happening. So over to you.